Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in Tube Lab number 58, we're going to talk about sound signatures. And we're going to have a big update about the kit amps. But, first caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, what in the heck is a sonic signature? Well, even though it sounds like it might be something Doctor Who would have in his pocket, it is in fact just a way of describing how something sounds using words. And that's where the trouble begins. It's not easy to describe how an amp sounds. As a professional listener, I rely on perhaps a dozen words to describe how things sound. Whether it's a tube, a preamp, cable, power amp, or a speaker. The reason for that is I want to stay within a set group of words everyone who listens to music can relate to and understand. When I say something is a touch bass forward, you all understand the bass will be turned up slightly. And when I say excellent stereo image, well, we all know that means the two channels are clearly presenting and most importantly are well defined. Let's take a quick look at a whole bunch of terms. Okay, low noise is up first. So, that, that's your total harmonic distortion or THD for short. Everything that is not the music or beneficial harmonics like the second harmonic. Now, because the second harmonic is really part of the THD, when we do our specifications for the kit amps, when we spec them up, we put two different numbers. One is the total THD, which is obviously going to be a little higher, and we put one that does not include the second harmonic. And in some cases, like the 6 or 12 SN7 preamp where we deliberately brought the second harmonic way up um, it's 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 a huge portion of the THD okay let's keep moving linear bass mid-range and treble all sound level and matched that's a linear sound linear can be used for a bunch of different descriptions of audio but as far as sound is concerned that's linear back a decrease in the EQ. EQ is just a short form for equalize, right? Now back is the same as turning a tone control down a wee bit. Neutral is flat. No additional EQ. Forward is a boost in the EQ. Same as turning a tone control up. Warm, that's your second harmonics. So if if somebody describes a tube or a preamp or an amp as being warm, then almost certainly the second harmonic is present and even though it's going to be way down, um, it's you know below the signal itself, it's still something that we can hear and appreciate. It could also be something uh, in the distortion or uh, in the circuitry that is making the sound softer. Okay, edgy. That's an easy one. That's a crisp presentation taken way too far. Okay, detailed. Well-defined music at a small scale. Example, the pluck of a string. Clarity. Let's get this down a little bit so we don't run out of space. There we go. Clarity is a very crisp, clean, clear sound. Now, if you've, if you've listened to my reviews, uh, particularly of tubes, you know that I have something I call the three C's. That's clarity. And for example, you'd be able to hear quite clearly the pluck of a string. That would be a nice, clear sound. Now, the opposite of that, of course, is muddy. I didn't put muddy in here, and I probably should have. Um, and... Muddy, um, 
Bass notes are some of the hardest notes to get a nice, crisp, clean sound out of. That's because the waves are so bloody long. They're immense. Um, when I'm listening to bass notes uh, critically, I almost imagine them coming at me like a cartoon from the from the woofers. That's how slow they are. Uh, high frequencies, uh, often a lot of a lot of gear uh, doesn't have a problem letting go of the high frequencies, getting them out there. Bass is a real problem. Okay, let's keep moving. Stereo image. With good detail and clarity comes a nice stereo image. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Sound stage. Okay. Instruments and voices have a correct position in front of you in all directions. So, left, center, right, front, mid, rear, and height. Now, you know, everyone's, everyone's um, listening room is going to be somewhat compromised. Our sitting position might be somewhat compromised. I, I sit in the sweet spot. And when actually I have a friend over, a fellow audiophile, um, or an appreciator of good music, I give them the sweet spot and I'll sit off to the side. And it's quite interesting when you sit off to the side because the, the image is different. So what we want to do with the sound stage is get as much of this right as possible. We're never going to get everything dead bang on, but you know, if we get it close, it'll be great. Musicality. There's a, this is a tough one. Realistic sounding music. The sound just pops. Sound is approaching close to live. Every audiophile's dream come true. I was going to say every audiophile's wet dream, but that would be inappropriate, so I did not say it. <laughs> okay, now, how does this apply to the descriptions uh, I've put in the store for the kid amps? Okay. And we're going to get to the cadamps in just a minute. In fact, I got a fun thing to show you. So, I just I just cut and paste these right out of the store descriptions. So for the 6 or 12 SN7 preamp, I mark the sound signature as warm, rich, detailed sound with lovely second harmonics. Excellent stereo image and sound st sound stage. Let's break that down just a little bit. So. If we've got a warm, rich, detailed sound, obviously we're going to have second harmonics, right? In fact, this, this preamp was deliberately designed so the second harmonic was brought up. That was what we were aiming for. And in fact, until we brought the second harmonic quite a bit up, the, the amp sounded good. Um, but, you know, uh, Charles and I were both doing critical listening on it, and neither one of us wanted to admit that it was that it was just good. <laughs> just good is like a death sentence to an amp designer. You want great, you want exciting, you want, you know, you want something a little special. And, um, and in no way, shape or form am I gonna release anything to the public um, that isn't, has, is not something special because what's the point, right? You may as well just go to Walmart and buy some piece of junk. So, um, so, it's got the second harmonics brought up. Now, here's something that I want to point out. If a piece of kit gear is well designed or a piece of manufactured gear is well designed, it's going to have an excellent stereo image and sound stage if your system is set up properly. There's a lot of good stuff out there on how to do this. It's not hard. Um, there's probably just no way to do it on TubeLab, but there's there's some really good stuff out there. Pollock PS Audio in particular, um, I, I listen to a lot of what he says. He is, if he's not bang on right, he's, he's, he's in the ballpark 99% of the time. And he does a lot, does a lot of stuff talking about um, speaker setup in particular. And if you want, if you want to get this part right, speaker setup is going to be critical. Everything matters but speaker setup is critical. Okay, let's keep going. What did I say for the E80CC? Well, I said it had 
great detail and clarity, very low noise and distortion, excellent stereo image and soundstage. So, great detail and clarity, very low noise and distortion. That sounds like it's a very different amp than the 612 SN7, and that's exactly right. The E80CC was designed around the fact that we have a very linear very quiet, very low distortion tube, the E80CC, which is, the E80CC, if you don't know, is basically a, a higher spec, um, taller, sexier looking 12AU7. That's with a bit more gain. It has a mu of 27 versus a gain of, of 20 for the 12AU7. Um, so I worked with those properties. And in fact, the minute I heard about the E80CC a long time ago, I'd always wanted to have a preamp. So. And of all of the amps I prototyped and built over the years, the 80cc, that was the easiest. It came alive right out, right out of the box, well, right off the bench. <laughs> That's a better way to describe it. God, I'm terrible with English. It is my first language. Anyways, um, it was just a very easy amp to design. And whereas this is a very warm sounding preamp, this is a very crisp, clean, clear sounding preamp. And it's basically a function of two major things. One, the tubes have very distinctive properties. And two, I designed for warmth here and I designed for clarity here. Okay, let's move on. How about the Uri Monoblocks? Great musicality, detail, clarity, Stereo image and soundstage. Great musicality. Now, you're not going to hear that too often describing a preamp. A preamp is a voltage gain device. It brings up the very low signals to a point at which we can control it quite easily with a volume pot and feed it off to a power amp, the URI. And musicality is, is is a wonderful way to describe a, a great dynamic sounding power amp, in my opinion. Now, the URI is a Class A, and Class A amps, tube amps in particular, but Class A amps in general, tend to have the detail and the clarity. And with that, of course, they're going to have a nice stereo image and soundstage. The musicality, that that's a, partly a, a product of everything I've learned about how to design a power amp. So I've got I've got a an oversized um, power transformer. I've got an oversized choke. I've got very short runs, and I've got an amazing uh, pair of tubes. I've got the uh, CV6 driver tube, which is a very low noise, um, just a superb tube for the front end. And I've got the um, is it the uh, 6P7S, the, this lovely Russian beam-powered tetrode, um, as a power tube. And I'd like to credit take credit for all of this, but really, I would say half of it, more than half of it, comes down to the tubes that we chose. Those made all the difference in the world between, you know, a good or even... <laughs> Let's just say, I was going to say mediocre, between a, a good power amp and a really good one, a great one. And that musicality, when you hear it in a, in a presentation of a system, musicality, it's, 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 it's what every, every audiophile lives for. Okay, now, what's going on with the kit amps? Well, lots. Let's get the decks cleared. We're going to have to back out a bit. Okay, let me get that on camera. <laughs> I still, I'm going to bring it up in a minute so you can see it up close. Okay, so all three kit amps are now listed in the store. So you can see all the resources in one place, the pricing's in place, but they're all tagged as back for back order because they're not quite ready for release yet. So test builders, you're just going to have to hang on a bit longer. The URI is going to come out first. And then we'll do one of the, one of the preamps 
after each after the other. In fact, the preamps will probably come tumbling out almost at the same time. But we're getting close, so hang on. This week, um, I'm working on finishing the URI top plates, and they're a lot of work manually. We've got a CNC machine coming, and you know the production plates will go a lot faster. But for now, I have to drill them manually. Um, and last week, I finished a run of the URI plinths, and here's here's the you know the test one I put together from the from the batch. I I, I made 30 of them, so I don't. I don't, the test builders are only going to, we're only going to send out four or five amps, I think, for each type. So I only needed about 15, but when you're, when you're milling wood, it's good to do lots at once. It's much easier on the setup time. Anyways, a plinth is just the base the amp sits in or on. It's basically a platform, or in this case, it's an open box, right? You could consider it part of the chassis, but this is old school, so we're going to call it a plinth. Let's just have a quick look at it. Now this is this is solid black cherry, and uh, in a past lifetime I was a fine cabinet maker, a fine custom cabinet maker, and I built furniture, designed furniture, and this was my absolute favorite wood to work with. And I'll show you why in just a minute. It looks sort of a little slightly beigey reddish brown right now, right? Have a look at this. This, all of these fine cutouts, they look nice and neat, and that's because I spent an entire day making a, um, a, custom, a custom jig so that we can make precise holes in wood for things like this. Isn't that lovely? So that's your IEC in with a built-in fuse. I use a couple of different kinds. There it is on the other side. And believe it or not, I just shredded the cherry. Cherries are hardwood. Um, and uh, so I just I just threaded it, and uh, and the fastener just goes in there. Now obviously you don't want to power drive it in, or you'll strip the screws. But it a hardwoods really hold screws quite well. And let's just take a look at the fasteners on the corner. These are um, Torx 15 drive, and um, they're very small and discreet. I mean my fingers are not that big, and I kind of like them. Originally I've been using these beautiful bronze. Uh, slot screws number eights and they're a little big and clunky and frankly they're just not commonly available whereas these things these have the quick drive thread anyways uh, hang on I think I've got one lying around here somewhere you can tell I get ready for these shows really well <laughs> here's one look at that sucker that thing goes in fast anyways um, they get you'll have I hand screw them in <laughs> And of course, there's a recess in the top where the where the aluminum plate goes. Okay, now this wood has been chosen because it darkens beautifully naturally. It oxidizes in air, believe it or not. And if it doesn't have something like a um, a lacquer finish on it, if it has an oil or a um, a hand rub varnish it'll it'll darken naturally and you know even in my listening room which is kept quite dark it they'll darken over time now it takes a while if you leave them unfinished sitting um, in a room with lots of light it'll darken up real fast but you've got to be careful because if you had let's say a drape shading it like this it would darken here and it would stay light here and it, it takes a long time for the you know the mismatch to catch up so I actually store my wood in the shade in the dark so that um, I don't have problems like that okay now obviously these these are all gonna I put the I'll put them together and I'll finish sand them but then I take them apart for shipping and the, there won't be anything in the kits that's pre-assembled I it's been my feeling that everybody wants to build their amp their own way from scratch so I'm not putting anything together you get to put the entire thing together. All I'm doing basically is supplying a kit of parts, some instructions, and um, and and some design expertise. That, <laughs> that that that's key. Okay, so here's a little fun thing. Let's get this big thing out of the road. Here's a little sample of cherry wood that's been hanging around for months. Look at how beautiful it's got. Now this got no finish on it. And this is my old system of fastening 
uh, for the prototypes, which we've now abandoned, and we're using the, you know, those very small discrete screws. So hang on a second, just stick with me. This is what I like to use. It's just so easy. It's a wipe-on poly. Now, if you're in North America, Minwax is in every hardware lumber yard in the world, in, in North America, sorry. Um, and they make, make good quality products. I used to use them in my pro shop um, for any of the hand finishes that I was using and for a lot of the staining. Um, the thing I like about any wipe-on polyurethane is that it's quite thin, so it doesn't build an ugly finish. I use satin. That's all I use exclusively. So have a look at this. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's it's that easy to finish nicely. And I'll do um I'm gonna do a module on how to finish your um on your your plinth in the build video. That's just to give you a hint of the how beautiful it is. It's nice. I think you know with a product that is part industrial, it's a you know it's a it's a, um it's a it's a nice looking piece of kit. But it, it, you know it's it's got tubes on the top. It's got transformers and chokes and you know whatnot. It's nice to have the combination of a really high quality solid um, cherry. Uh, plinth around it. I think it softens the whole appearance, and you know maybe it'll <laughs> maybe it'll um, it'll help a little bit with um, the partner approval. <laughs> okay, what came in this week? Well, not a lot, believe it or not. For three days straight, nothing came in. But what did come in is absolutely fabulous. Back in stock, I'm happy to say are these really high demand EL34s. And here's a match quad. And these are Japanese made Matsushitas. And um, I've talked about them before. And one of them is, look at the irony of all this. One of them is, is rebranded Philips. And the equipment to make these came from Philips Mullard. <laughs> and in fact, Philips way back in, I think the early fifties, uh, entered into a partnership with Matsushita, and that brought the Philips Muller technology to Japan. Anyways, um, they're very high demand tubes. They're um, they're expensive because they're they're fairly they're not common. Um, and um, and anytime you have a short shortage of 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 tubes, these are new old stock. Um, when you have a shortage of tubes, so you have high demand, and then you have lower production numbers, the price goes up. It's just the way it works. Let's just have a quick look at them. These all have a large single halo getter. And one of the design features of these that helps you identify them is that they have one large seam across the top. You see that? That's the mold of the glass, how it's made. Anyways, another quad's back in the store, and to help you, let's take a look. Oh, wait. Black Friday sale is still underway. In fact, one of the reasons why the kit apps aren't out yet is I'm so busy shipping orders, and the sale has been just great so far. The, the code is Black Friday 15. It gets you 15% off your entire order. It's the biggest sale of the year at Vallas and more. And I might have covered it up, but there's still flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vallas and more signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>